out there in the comic book community world and welcome to another weekly rundown. The rundown goes through comic books released on February 15th, 2012. We got, I would say, judging by all the comics this week, we've got a fair amount of comics. Not really too many, the big two being the hugest of the um, piles this week as far as comic books um so yeah not really a huge huge week but if you're a huge shopper in the big two yeah it's gonna cost you a nice pretty petty so uh first of all this video is probably going to be going up on the 14th so happy valentine's day to all you guys out there i do not like the holiday but i feel the urge to actually wish it mm. uh with me only this time is my brother mike you hey. guys know me i'm chris you hey guys uh, Cody's not here because we're filming this uber, uber, uber early because I've got work all this week and we have to shoot this video really early. Mike's going to edit it for me and um, yeah, so it's just going to be a huge week. So let's not even bother talking about this anymore. Let's get into the comic books and this week we are starting off with Dark Horse. I'll be doing it and first comic we're talking about is uh, BPRD Hell on Earth Long Death. Number one. What a huge, long title for this comic book. Um, BPRD works with Hellboy. Uh, interesting cover. I was interested in getting it, but I have a friend who reads Hellboy and BPRD, and he says, unless you started from the beginning, don't even bother. You'll, you'll be lost. Yeah, um... I like how the sun rays come in effect. I mean, that that's what really like catches my eye, like seeing that. And all in all, the setting's pretty amazing. That's all I have to say. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, I like it. I wanted to get it. I really, really wanted to get it badly. The only problem was, once again, the um, you can get lost really easily on um, because you if you don't read it from the beginning, you know. All right, so moving along, there's only two comics from IDW this week, so finally this week, huh, I've been waiting for this. Star Wars, Dawn of the Jedi, number one. I like it. I love the background. I like the lightsaber. Uh, there was a, a advertisement for before Darth Vader. There was somebody. There was somebody darker or some something like that, and I loved it. The quote just got me hooked. I like the floating things in the background. They remind me of that book of the Sith uh, thing that I still have to get because it looks really, really awesome. But I am eagerly awaiting my copy of Dawn of the Jedi number one. If you guys are a Star Wars fan, you are definitely, definitely going to want to be checking this out. It's epic. The background and story itself. I mean, they any make... Star Wars fans just pick up the comic book. You gotta admit, Mike, they make good covers. I I agree with you 100%. Definitely. I love it. I cannot... I really cannot wait uh, for the next um, issue. Alright, Mike. So, why don't you take it away now? We're going into Dynamite. Alright, thank you, Chris. Alright, this week, coming from Dynamite, we start off with Army of Darkness, number one. They're starting up Army of Darkness again. And it turns out that that woman with the... So like Ash is yeah. Ash from a different I think it's gonna be Ash from a different universe or something. Pretty it, nice. Yeah, like I, like the um the underwear that <laughs> You had to point that out? I couldn't help it. It's drawn in perfectly. Yeah. But with all that being said though, uh the cover looks amazing and I, I think it's going to look uh, pretty interesting. I mean, Army of Darkness is... Uh, I was going to get it. I just decided not to at the last minute. Well, time. hey, if it's a one-of-a-kind comic book, uh, I'd say for anybody out there that's interested, just grab it and... I actually... I'll be honest with you guys. Take a take on it. I might be... I'm interested enough that I might actually get it in the next... In my next order. Okay. All right, next we got Flash Gordon... Z... Z Geist? Z guys, Z guys, I guess. Whatever. Number three. Uh, the cover does look pretty amazing. It looks wow. like it, it looks, looks by like, Alex Ross. Yeah, it looks like a fantasy land. Like you know, like when you go onto the other side of the world and you see like all these mystical things, like the globe in the background, for I like instance. The fortress. And the, I like the fortress. Yeah, I, like I mean the, the earth. I like all the different planets. Yeah, the, the cover is just phenomenal. I mean, it, it is just superb, amazing. I mean, Alex Ross has never. Doubted he's, us wrong. He's never, 
Alex like Ross art never work. does. No, he never goes. Never wrong. does. No, I have to say, Alex Ross, you still do a great job to this day. <laughs> All right, next we got Queen Sonia, number twenty-seven, and uh, <laughs> wow, it looks like she's gonna get her way with that guy. I mean, no, I, I think that that I not in that way. I'm just saying in like revenge, sort of to say vengeance or vengeance, yeah. But uh, wow. I like the way it's drawn. Um, I just like the the cover it's Cody in general. Cody's character. Yeah, so yeah, if he's watching this, so uh, yeah. Cody, go get that issue. Yep, you know you want it, so go get it. All right, next is Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, Eye of the World, number twenty-one. Mm. Uh, classically drawn. It looks like they're like knights. So I, uh, they are knights. It's not that they look like they are knights. Well, they are knights, but it looks very classic, I would say, and very... Uh, looks like somebody's about to get their head chopped off. Or decapitated, if you want to go... That's back. what getting your head well, chopped anyway, off Well, anyway, with all not uh, improving our vocabulary here... Yes, sir. This cover would have to be really, yeah, interesting and very good to look at, and... Pretty much, that's all I have to say for that. And moving on next, we got Vampirella number 14. Oh my god, they had to put Yin Yang behind her? I mean, seriously? A blood Yin Yang? Personally, oh. I don't read uh, Vampirella. I, mean, I have no interest in I comic, have no interest in either. I heard it was a good series. It's her versus Dracula going on or something like that. You know, what is it with vampires and Dracula? Twilight. Enough said. Well... That's adding werewolves. We're not going to get into that, but anyway. Shut up, they'll make a werewolf book next. Don't give them ideas. I'm not. But anyway, the yin, yang, the yin yang symbol, like Chris just pointed out before, it says it all, so interesting enough. All right, and wow, the next comic book I'm amazed of uh, seeing, uh, Warehouse 13, number four. This is the photo cover. Yes, now, for those of you who've watched the series Warehouse 13, like, I watch it, and it is yeah, just... Yeah, I know, this girl came from, uh, one of the, the actresses came from Drake and Josh on Nickelodeon, actually. Yep, that is correct, and I, I have to say, it's going pretty well, the, from what I hear from comics and TV series, and all that, but, I don't know, what's your take? Um... I, uh, the series sounds like a good series, but really, I, I have nothing to really say on it. All right. Well, it's a good series. I have to admit that, so... Okay, so you you, you know more about this than me. Yep. And last but finally, <laughs> not least, from Dynamite, we have Warlord of Mars, Deja Thorns, right? Yeah, Thoris. Taurus. Taurus. I, Taurus. I almost ma messed up. Number 10. <laughs> Uh, uh, why? Why even? Get, I mean, get, 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 um, I don't know if I should say giggity towards it or uh, I, I shouldn't. I, I tentacles and and barely dressed woman uh, and to Mars. Um, yeah, I think we pretty much uh, I, have nothing. I have nothing to say. So, I think it's safer with nothing said than with something said. So let's say we've said nothing, even though yeah. let's say we said something. As opposed to saying nothing. Yeah, so that's all for Dynamite. So now I'll pass on Image to my brother Chris where he will do that. Okay, we're going into Image now. And first off is act, uh, Activity number three. Like the cover. Um, got like the army feel with the helicopters. Two people walking with a burro. It, it, it does look like a war story, kind of. No. Like, what gave it away? The helicopters? The gun right above no, no, the No, 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 no. Like, like, there could be something behind this that set off this war. I mean, you always want to know the reasons of why this was caused in that uh -huh. sort of way. That, it's that's, issue three. I'm sure we know what was set off of already. Well, I'm just saying that's what piques the people's interest, not just yeah. us, just other people. That's all I got. Gotcha. Next up. Darkness 99. I wish I knew which issue I can jump onto. I love the darkness, and you know, I, I just can't go 100 issues back. I'm gonna probably b pick up issue 100 just for the fact that it's the 100th issue. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, this cover looks really nice. Darkness is a really good story. Wish I could have jumped on that and Witchblade, um, when they were first uh, released. But this cover looks epic. What do you think? 
it looks amazing. I mean, it's amazingly drawn. You got lots of uh, the one on the bo bottom right there looks like a dark side from DC. If you little, really look tiny a bit. little tiny bit, not too much, but basically that's what I would say, pretty much. Yeah, but it's just an epic comic. Um, hopefully, maybe with issue 100, I'll be able to jump on board with this. Um, but yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. Then yeah, really good comic, guys. You should check it out. Next up, we have Glory, number 23. Um, that kind of looks like Omega Red. I have nothing for this one. Uh, Why do I keep thinking of uh, every character I look at, I think it's something else, but it isn't. Because you're weird. I know, I am. Um, I have nothing to go with this. What do you have? What's your take? Uh, It looks uh, pretty good. I mean, it's a guy, a woman, I don't know, with a big sword. Uh. I would say it looks pretty interesting, but I would say it looks uh, pretty much okay mm. in that sense. Okay, next up is Mor Moriarty, mm -hmm. number nine. The Lazarus Tree. Uh, the know. drawing. I like it. It looks like you... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go first. It looks like something you would actually see as a book cover, more or less. Yeah, I like it. It's an interesting cover. I wouldn't buy the book, though. But I Oh, no, I'm not saying if you will buy it or not. I'm just saying that's something you actually see in the book. But it is classically drawn and very well descriptive of uh, what it is, mm -hmm. the cover. Oh, yes. Okay, next up is Peter Pazer Faust. Has a first? Uh, Is that general? Number one. I don't know. It's the first issue. It's a man waving on top of a tank with a rocket launcher. Uh, hmm. Yeah, Mike, go ahead. Take it away because I have no idea. Um, well. Definitely I get. Not Peter Pan. No, no, not Peter Pan at all, no. But. To be honest, I really don't have anything to say, so may as well move on to the next All cover. All right, so we'll move on to Super Dinosaur, number eight. Ah, dinosaurs in suits, in those, um, what are those Japanese things called, those Japanese fighting suits called? Um, Zords? No, mecha suits. Okay. And one of them has a claw. Well, yeah, Battle of the Robot Machines, but only dinosaurs inside them, and uh, I pretty much it would be something that uh, people would pick up if they like to see dinosaurs clashing. I mean, maybe it won't be like a Godzilla comic book, but uh, we'll we'll, okay. we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree to that. Okay, and last up this week, another comic uh, I wish I could have gotten into. Uh, I was thinking about getting issue 150, but yeah, no. Witchblade, 153. Um, new story arc begin began in 150. We're now in 153. What a wow. Yeah. <coughs> we went fast. three comic books forward in less than a month. And we know somebody who likes Witchblade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it really just jumped uh, three issues. Uh, it's good. The series is very good. I would highly recommend it to anybody who's a fan of Image or interested in Image. Uh, it's a really good series. Yeah, I agree. Um, it coincides with the darkness as well as activity. Uh, uh, activity. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, artifact. It, artifact is both of them together. Witchblade and Darkness are both from the same world, quote-unquote world. Both series are amazing. Uh, at some point, I'll probably do what Chris Dawkins Howlett's wife uh, mentioned and get the omnibus of both Darkness and Witchblade. And that'll really catch me up fast because omnibuses are like 20 and 30 issues long. They're just very, very expensive. So That I Mike, could agree with you. My birthday's coming up. Yep. So... Just remember that. Now, then I, again, now I know. Then again, I do want the Book of the Sith and the Book of the Jedi, and they're both $60 each. All so right. Let, so. let, let's not get carried away All now. Right. One thing at a time. Yeah. Okay, so I'm giving it back to you now, Mike. Take it over with Boom Studios. All right. Let's go into Boom, and we are going to start with Hellraiser Masterpieces number eight. Live Barker. Uh, nice photo cover. Never was a fan of Pinhead. You? Uh, it looks very nicely drawn. I, I it's like I saw that face somewhere, but I can't remember from where. Maybe a commercial, some I don't know. 
But moving over and away from that, next we got Planet of the Apes, number 11. Uh, that guy in the middle looks like that guy from M LMFAO with very short hair. Goonrock? Or the other guy? The guy with the glasses. Oh, that guy. Yeah, I forgot what his name was at the moment. But Maybe anyway. because the picture's far away. I don't think if I zoomed in on it, it would change. Nah. No, not really. Yeah, but anyway, heard yeah. that this series is turning out uh, very well and... Looks interesting. Yeah, if you guys have read Plan of the Apes thus far, just pick up this issue and... Uh, yeah. Plan of the Apes. All right, and lastly from Boom, we got Roger Langridge's Snarked <laughs> Number Five. And yes, <laughs> it, it, it does sound funny, Snarked. <laughs> like, oh, it, wait, it, it's like, is that a ring pop in his hand? Well, he's been snarked and win umbrella and, and the crown. Wait a minute, this isn't Robin Hood now, is it, or something, or Peter Pan? I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, <laughs> uh. Very uh, funny cover. Funny cover and odd, but Mike, you've been snarked. Yeah, and there's a hat too with the umbrella, and then a hammer. <laughs> I'm being observant more, aren't I? Yes, you are. All right. Well, anyway, uh, it does have a funny name, but therefore it can be a good story. Very true. So that's all I have my take on it. So, Chris. I leave it back to you to go with IDW, so take it away, bro. Okay, IDW. First off this week is Dungeons and Dragons Legend of Drizzit Never Winter Tales number five. However, this cover is issue three because issue five is impossible to find. I can't find it anywhere. I went on many web browsers and nobody has an image to this comic that is coming out so unfortunately guys we can't review the co the actual cover for the legend of drizzit uh, wish i could help but uh... this is the nearest cover i could find and this is cover number this is issue three uh, however it does look mysterious it looks though. interesting but i'm sorry guys this is the only cover no matter where i went i could not find so let's move on to a cover i could find which was Ghostbusters number six, epic cover. This is, I believe, the uh, Nick. I forgot his last name. Um, Nick something cover. So if you're gonna go buy it, it's Nick, the first name. Uh, Ghostbusters has finally moved away from the movie story arc completely, starting its own entity finally, and it's looking pretty good. I'm not gonna say amazing yet, but. It's holding its own, and Ghostbusters is a really fun read. Mike, what do you think of the cover? I like the cover. If they have a post of this, oh, I, I, would, I would definitely hang in our room because that is something that is to hang nice up on picture. our wall right oh, here. Yeah. Okay, next up, G.I. Joe Retaliation Movie Prequel Number 1. And, of course, Snake Eyes is on the cover. Well, thus again. he's the main focus of G.I. Joe, apparently. as we speak so far. Apparently. Apparently, but... Apparently. 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 Yes, apparently. Apparently. Let's move on from apparently. Okay. Next up, we have Godzilla Kingdom of Monsters, number 12. Is that Mecha Godzilla? No, that's not Mecha Godzilla, is it? This alien Godzilla with the alien thingy crystals I, in his shoulder. I forget. I, forget I don't know. Name. One of my friends uh, I know, I hang out with, know about it. Yeah. It looks like he's missing his the bottom part of his legs or maybe it's like, like the, the fortress of solitudes growing out of his back in a not so good way but hey it looks like an, an epic cover and an epic story hey yeah it's not like our series epic story but just an epic way of how the story is oh yeah didn't want to throw that in there mm -hmm. but yeah next up we have infestation number two dungeons and dragons number one I called it, guys. It It's a week late. Uh, it was supposed to come out last week. Unfortunately, I guess it was a printing error. So here you guys have Dungeons & Dragons number one for Infestation number two. Um, Infestation did good in Transformers number one. So now Dungeons & Dragons is getting its issue number one. Nice cover, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I mean, minus the part that it's missing a head, but... What head? There's his head. Is. Oh, from There's back his hair. Oh, from back here, it looked like his head was chopped off. No. I'm not far-sighted, so my apologies there. But uh, with all that said, uh, Dungeons & Dragons, 
Looks uh, like an interesting read Looking for those. Looking good. Looking good indeed. So, yeah, just pick it up and uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah, but just to let you guys know, once again, this is a late comic, but yeah. And since it's a late comic, that means next on our list is Infestation number two, Transformers now, number two. Now, yeah. this is the second and final part to Transformers. Yeah. This, is the, this is on time. Dungeons I, and Dragons a week late. Oh, okay, because I was about to say, how are two infestations... Dungeons become? and Dragons was supposed to come out yeah, last know, week, but... it was delayed. Right. Now this couple sense. looks awesome, um, however, it's Bumblebee on the cover. I think Bumblebee's mm. going to be Transformers' new poster child. Well, Optimus Prime's always going to be number one. Of course. In my eyes, oh, at yes. least. Yes, but... Um, looks good. I'm looking forward to seeing part two. Part one was really awesome. Okay, next up we have... Star Trek Legion and the Legion of Superheroes, Ooh. number five. Legion of Superheroes make an appearance? Wow. Uh, Mike, this is a five-issue mini. We've talked about this before. Where have you been? I've Hi, been... nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. Who are you again? I don't know. Keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, I have something to say. Oh, uh, well... Uh... Well, yeah, that was the whole point of well, keep yeah, going. Well, uh... yeah, well, I lost track there, but yeah, it looks very... Oh, trust me, I've had many of those. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, very well uh, drawn, and it does look uh, very uh, unique Star in their way, and Star trek -y. Yeah. Yes, I love Spock. Next, we have the dynamic duo of Stephen King and his son, Joe Hill, doing Road Rage number one. I missed out on this issue. I'm probably getting this too. Uh, Joe Hill is known for Lock and Key. Oh. And we all know who Stephen King is. If you don't well, yeah. know who Stephen King is, seriously, start checking up on your horror. This looks really good. It's about a, a, a I believe, a biker gang that's being chased by this truck. The cover actually says basically what's probably going to be going on in this book, and it looks really good. I opted out because I had too many books this week. Um... This, as well as the other book I mentioned, um, Army of, excuse me, Darkness, are probably going to be in my cart for next week. Both look really good. <clears throat> Check out Dark Avenger in two weeks to see how I feel about it, uh, if, in fact, I do get these two comic books. Yeah, it's, it's a rocking cover. Dude, it's Stephen King and it's Joe Hill. Hey, two for the price of one, you know the issue's going to be awesome. Oh, and yeah. And off the hook. And finally this week from IDW, a comic series I just started reading, uh, Transformers More Than Meets the Eye, number two, Rodimus Prime on the cover. Why do I keep calling him Rodimus Prime? It's Rodimus, period. You know, you used to call him Rodimus Prime because in the in the Transformers movie, they called him Rodimus he became Rodimus Prime, Prime when Optimus that, Prime died. Right, so it, it's something we all adapt to and then get used to yeah, after a while. Yeah, I guess. It's Rodimus, it's Ultra Magnus. They're on a quest to find the Knights of Cybertron, and at the end of the first issue, things did not look too hot. We'll see how things go uh, in issue number two. Yeah, but with a cover like this... I didn't get this cover. I got cover B. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll see what that looks like. But for this cover in general, this would have to be uh, epic as of oh, yeah. how this is turning Definitely. out so far. Okay, guys. We are done officially with the uh, independence, and we are now going into the big two. And Michael, once again, yes. gets Marvel. Of course, and thank you, Chris, for passing it on to me. Okay. I don't like you. I love you, too. Starting with Marvel, we're like going you. to do Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 2, Number 679.1. You don't have to say what volume. It's 679.1. Okay, well, thanks for and telling me that now. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Spider-Man's on the cover. Look at the cover. It's awesome. I know, with the whole blue the that blue goes is, into it. Yeah, and all that sticks out is the webbing under his arms. Right. Which makes it look like he has massive arm underarm hair. Well, that's how and he looks like in 2009. I'm making a joke. Thank you very much for interrupting Hey, he's my me. favorite superhero. And the red. I'm sorry, this cover is awesome. I know. I feel bad it's going to be ruined by... Um, the fact that they're going to put the Amazing Spider-Man across the top and that's going to cut off his uh, elbow and whatnot, but still, awesome cover. I would definitely agree. I mean, as a Spider-Man fan myself... Make a poster of this. Oh, yes, absolutely. All right, next we got Anita Blake, Vampire Hunter, uh. Circus of the Damned, 
Book three, scoundrel number four. Take a breath. Take <sighs> a breath after that one. Boy, I almost had to go fox in there. Dude, but where anyway. are they going to fit all that on this cup? Well, there's a lot of blue sky. Yeah, but uh, it looks very... Okay. Clown, vampire, woman with gun. Move along. Yeah, and that's meaning away from Twilight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know we're hating on Twilight a lot. Next, Avengers number 22. Looks like Cap the Avengers are going after the the right, the red right hand. It looks that way. I mean, Captain America's in action along with the other superheroes, and it looks like it's going to be but, but fantastic. But they were fighting the new the, the the new Dark Avengers. What what uh, what uh, what what's uh, what's going on here? I don't know. Maybe they're skipping around. Oh, I could I hope say. Not. I hope not. I don't hope not either. Ah, here's some uh, some people been looking forward to. I have. Avenging Spider-Man number four. Oh man, it looks the artwork's changing in this issue, and it's Hawkeye that's guest starring. I'm excited for it. Yeah, I mean Spider-Man Hawkeye. I mean, or you could say that this is Skadoosh. Yes, Skadoosh indeed, as Kung Fu Panda would one say. But uh, yeah, awesome cover. You got a great. Uh, Semi matchup. So it's to say. basically Spider-Man team ups, though. I just wish they wouldn't call it Avenging Spider-Man. We all know it's really Spider-Man team ups. That too. So yeah. All right. Next up, Daredevil number nine. Daredevil's been going good. Yep. Dare, from what one. you've been reviewing and from what I've been reviewing, uh, from there, it looks really interesting in a way of uh, seeing those. Uh, Aliens. They're not aliens. I, I knew it. I knew you were going to do that. Those aren't aliens. Those are mole people. Mole people. Thank you. I, I was trying to figure out the word and, I, and aliens came to my mind instead of mole people for some odd reason. But uh, I would say I, I, I'm going to look into it as well. I look, I'm look. i looking forward to reading this issue this week. Yep. Okay, and now next. Dark Tower Gunslinger Way Station. Number three. Something's in the basement. Yes, and it and is... This man with a... Is that a hook hand? Or, no, he's holding a gun. Um, this man's going to get it. The end. Yeah, it's you dark. Ahead and then we'll move forward. Too dark for some. I mean, it looks like you're seeing... Like, you want to know what's down there. I don't want to know what's down there. I'd sooner lock the door and never go there again. Well, that's in your case, but in anyone else's cases, if you want to know what's down there, or if they're just trying to play with your minds or something, which some covers do, oh yes, I would check this out. Oh yes. Okay, away from darkness. Next, fear itself, fearless number nine. Ugh. Wolverine. It's still going on. <laughs> fear itself has been over for how long now? Pretty much long enough. Or. So to say. Five months almost, and it's still... Okay. Yeah, we see Wolverine getting in this cover, and... Uh, oh, he'll give it back to, to, to Cross. Oh, yeah, he has that healing factor. Oh, yeah. He'll get back up it. on his feet, and... Psh, anything you got? Mm, no? That's it. Okay. It should be over. Fear itself should be a memory now. Well, let's see uh, as time goes on. All right, next. Four... Four Formic Wars. Silent Strike number three. Is uh, this me or does that middle guy look like Rambo? Mm, kind of, a little bit. Damn it, Sylvester Stallone, will you ever leave us? He's uh, making a new Judge Dredd movie, you know. Oh, I did not know that. Wow. So any of you people who are Sylvester Stallone fans out there, you got a movie preview of what you're going to expect seeing. But just looking over Adrian. that... Yes, Adrian. But looking over those things... Why must you repeat everything I say? Because I have the voice. Thank you. The cover does look awesome. You got a team and lots of adventure. Red suits, everything like that. Moving on. Yes, moving on. Next, Generation Hope number 16. Thank you, God, this series is being canceled. It It's just dopey. Yeah, and from the way it looks here, uh, it looks very... Dopey. Dopey and very flat. Ah, uh, what? Oh. Nah, uh, what can I say about Hope? Nightcrawler died when Hope came to this world. Jean Grey is better. And Hope is going to be the focal point to Avengers vs. X-Men. I hope in this case that Hope kills her own father or something. That would be epic. 
That would be actually epic to see. I would like to see that. Yeah, but that. Generation Hulk, for those of you X-Men fans, the only, only the die-hard ones are really interested in Generation Or newer readers who like Hope or some of the ma the characters in the book will like it. I personally am not a Hope fan, nor do Neither I am I. I just don't care. So yeah, it's definitely not a series I'd be checking out. Moving along. Alright, yes, moving along indeed. Halo! Full of Reach uh Invasion number two. Sorry, I said Halo too fast. Yes, so. Halo Fall of Reach Invasion number two. Sorry, I, I said yeah. Halo, so I had to say the rest of the title. Uh, yeah, just... I'll give you one from DC. Fine. Maybe. Well, be nice. Anyway. I don't want to be nice. Halo Fall of be, Reach. This cover would have to be, by far, this, really good. This series has gone through three Fall of Reach. There was Fall of Reach. Uh-huh. Covenant. Fall of Reach. Uh, the Master Chief one, whatever that was. And, and now, I, Invasion. I, Enough! I know. Halo's done! At least the Fall of Reach. Well, not Hold video off games. on your comic series, done. Marvel. Please. Well, then again, there's video games. They gotta do it to comic books. That's business, basically. But I agree with you. Not saying I disagree with you. I agree with you. Damn right. Yeah. Moving along. Moving along, indeed. Next, Invisible Iron Man, number 513. Iron Man versus War Machine. This would have to be one of the coolest Iron Man battles from what covers. we covers and covers from what we've seen from movies and comic books and He's how like many times have they fought? Not too other. many, but I like the bro hug. It's like bro, bro hug. Oh, he wants to give him a hug. <laughs> but yeah, yeah uh, we've had too much Pepsi as this video is proceeding. Uh, actually, I, I've I've drank too much apple juice, but Pepsi too. I gotta remember not to anymore. Okay, anyway, moving along. Yes. Uh, New Avengers number 21. This cover is... Ragnarok. Wow. Ragnarok dressed as Thor beating the crap out of the New Avengers. Now I know the New Dark Avengers at least are in the New Avengers comic. Yes, but jaw-dropping. And the story of seeing this you know what bothers looks me, forward. You know what bothers me? On the cover, Spider-Man's in his regular costume. But in the book, he's, he's still in his, his FF costume. Oh, he's in the FF? I don't know either. Do, haven't you noticed that sometimes the cover, they always put them in the regular or the black uniform? And then in the comic book, it's different. I don't know. It's like, seriously, don't give them a personality costume It's change. a good series. I would highly recommend checking it out. That I would as well. With that, next, Thunderbolts number 170. I'm just, my eyes are stuck on that girl with the white dress. Let me guess. Because it looks awesome. Okay. All right. Now I know more. Uh, I've heard a couple of uh, yeah, GI Joe. Joe. I have heard a couple of uh, people talking about the series, and it's going pretty good. So I've heard from other reviewers, but all in all, I would say for those who have read it this far to pick it up, and yeah, that's Thunderbolts for me. Anything you got? Nope. All right then. Ultimate Comics X Men. Number seven. Wow. Is that Ultimate Psylocke? <laughs> well, if that's Ultimate Psylocke... Or is that Ultimate Jean still? I don't know who to choose because they're both... Stop just... staring at her, Mike. I'm not staring at her. I'm just amazed at the purpleness and yeah, the, the icon. Yeah, the purpleness. That's the... exactly what you're staring at. <laughs> anyway, uh... Uh, Ultimate <laughs> Comics, honestly, uh, on a serious note now, guys. Ultimate Comics, um... I I I'm, I respect their dead is dead rule, but I don't know. I haven't read an Ultimate book in a while because it has definitely changed and evolved so much since the first issues and volumes of all of these comics. Um, I don't know. Yeah, if you notice the bottom, like there's a leg here on the left side. Where's the leg? It's like there's a missing leg on the left side. Like it's not drawn in. Maybe because the cover, the purple's covering it. Move it along. could be that. I don't Stop know. I, it. I'm going to move along for you. Yeah. Aw. All right. Next one we got Uncanny X Men number seven. Oh, Colossus and his sister uh -uh. versus Magical Demons. Magical Demons. I wouldn't know. I don't read Uncanny X Men anymore. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the cover itself is very. Epically drawn and interesting. I love the sword. I want the sword. 
you could go on Amazon.com and see if they have it. I'm pretty sure they do. But, uh, don't shake your head, no. But with all that and the fighting and all that stuff that's going on, pretty amazing. Mm hmm. So I say. All right. Next, Venom number 13.2 featuring X23. And, and it has X23's artist in this book, so I am so happy about that. Yeah, because, um, because, um, it looks like X23 is, uh, it's very interesting. I mean, X-23 is like one of my favorite, uh, almost female X-Men characters next to Jean Grey. But the background and the whole, like, fiery thing that's going on there, can't get better than that. No. Absolutely can't get better than that. I'm excited for this issue. Um, really good. Yeah, I think there's only about two more. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for it. The covers all come together. Um, I really wasn't into the whole Ghost Rider one. X-23 is definitely going to pick it up. I think after that is Red Hulk, and then finally is Venom, and then we go into issue 14. Really good stuff. All right. Next, Winter Soldier, number two. Loving the covers. Loving the story. Loving everything about it. There all you go. I could yeah. say right there, that would be a good Terminator poster. Mm-mm. Terminator? Mm -mm. You're not saying that that guy does not look like Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator style with the sunglasses and the sidekick? You have a hundred comic book people on the computer right now right. digitally punching you. Can I have an opinion of what the cover looks like? I didn't no. say this was Terminator. No. And I didn't name it Terminator. I just said in my opinion it looks like it. I like the way the comic's going. The artwork's great. The covers are awesome. I like the Black Widow and Bucky Winter Soldier thingy chemistry going on. And it's a great comic. Mm -hmm. And, okay. That's it. Okay. Alright, next up. Wolverine, number 301. Oh, I love it. Wolverine, Samurais, Japan, New Silver Samurai, Sabretooth, and Mystique is alive again. And all that combination equals an awesome, awesome comic book. book that you would absolutely would want to pick up. Oh, yeah. Very, very interesting. Mm hmm And it's been around, like, everywhere, uh, hearing about the X-Men after the 300th issue and beyond that. Oh, yes. And last, but certainly not least, from Marvel, concluding it with X-Factor, number 232. That you're buying. Yes, that I am buying. And, uh... Wow. Lots of stuff going on here with the blue Psychedelic. flames. Psychedelic, yeah, and it's I don't like it. Doesn't bit X Factor in my opinion. And is that a skull? It looks right like there? it. Yeah, it looks like it. What are you copying the Punisher now? Punisher mixed with Oops. Owl. Mixed with um what's his name? Doctor Strange, sure. Yeah. But I'll be interested in reading that. And that, my friends, is all from Marvel, I'll now pass it on to my brother Chris, where he will conclude the rundown with DC. Alright guys, there, we've got a nice amount of comics from DC this week. I don't believe as much as Marvel, but starting off DC, we'll start with Batman number 6. The strongest of all the Batman titles, in my opinion. I do not like this cover whatsoever. It's I creepy. Paid, I paid the extra $2 on purpose to get the variant cover, because this cover is just freaky. Uh... But the story itself is really awesome. Greg Capello's artwork is awesome. Uh, I would highly recommend checking this book out. Uh, despite the cover, you can get the variant cover, which is what I did, and it'll look and you'll it'll look right over all that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sticking with Batman, well, series-wise, anyway, a series that's connected to Batman, Birds of Prey, number six. Batgirl's on the cover. Poison Ivy's on the cover, and Starling's back. And it looks like Poison Ivy's doing some interrogation. Really nice. Really nice. Really, really nice. Um, I really like this co this comic series. Um, I'm on the fence about it right now. It really depends where it keeps going. If it keeps going, eh, probably end up dropping it. But for the time being, I can definitely say it's awesome. Next up, we have Blue Beetle, number six. I don't read it. 
I don't read. Really I don't either. really care. Neither do it's, I. I believe it's like a Hispanic soap opera with an alien costume mixed in. Ideal meal. I I saw that a lot in issue one. Mm. I don't know. For any Blue Beetle fans, I would say check it out. Why not? Okay, next up is Captain Atom number six. How did this series not get canned as well? I don't know. There are many people who like Captain Atom ever since he joined the Justice League Unlimited and they thought he was so bad when he turned against them, or so to speak. Um, he could be uh, an anti hero. Is he an anti hero or a villain? No, he's a he's superhero Captain Atom. Oh. So, mm -hmm. um,. I don't know. I know when Joe was doing the reviews on our side, he dropped it pretty quick, so... Not turning yeah. out well for some of them. No. Next up, we have Catwoman, number six. Uh, again, Batman? It seems like every other issue... Oh, here we go. Batman is somehow in the Catwoman mm. books. And I didn't get this issue. But it's not so just Catwoman books, Chris. It's in almost every DC book thus far. Yes. That we've seen them in. Oh, yes. But uh, I dropped Catwoman after the last issue. Last issue was kind of stupid, so I decided to just... Um, Move yeah. away from that. and. Uh, Although this cover is really nice, but oh well. Going out of the mainstream DCU for a bit, we have DC Universe Online Legends, issue number 23. I believe one more to go. Thank God. Oh, yes. Uh, What's wrong with Marvin Martian? I mean, uh, Marvin Martian! Marvin Martian. Brainiac! Brainiac. Ma really? If nobody gives him slack for saying that, I swear. Excuse me, I've had a long day. I'm sure you have. Oh, I have Marvin no idea, Martian. don't know I, what's going on. I, I just slap myself. Ow. Harder next time, Michael. Harder. No. Not even. Okay. So really we have not much to say about this. We're not reading the series. For those of you who are interested in the video game, you'll be checking this out. I believe there's one more issue to go. Next up, DC Universe presents number six. New story begins here. It does not involve dead man. It involves challenges of the unknown, I believe. And uh, yeah. for those of you who don't really notice this, the mountain is not really a mountain. It's a person. No. You couldn't tell until I pointed. I was face. I was gonna say it's a person until you pointed it out. You could it tell by the eyes like, and the it arms. It looks like a mountain at first, but if you really look hard enough, it's a person. I'm pretty sure that some people might see it. Okay, so that's DC Universe uh, presents. Next up is End of Nations number four. Nice army pose. Ten Hut. Semper Fi and all that kind of jazz? Sir, yes, sir, indeed. Okay, anything you have to say on this? Um, very mass destructive, and he looks like he's saying, you know what, I'm going to end it all, so let's just begin the war and end it. Mm -hmm. That's what looks like that pose. Okay, jumping into Vertigo for this title, Fables 114. Mm-hmm. I hear Fables is a huge, huge book. Um, it's been out there a lot of places. I know, it's huge. I, I actually got the first two volumes. Hopefully at some point I'll be able to catch up uh, with the series. It's really, really good. Um, it's one of the best titles out of uh, Vertigo, actually. Um, That's right. Yeah. Jumping back into mainstream DCU, we have Green Lantern Corps, number six. Oh, they're bringing the big guns in now. And that's really all I could say. Three big guns. Guy Gardner's going to save Jon Stewart. And I, this cover definitely shows that's exactly what they're going to do. And uh, that's all I really got for this. Mike? Um, Nothing really, but interesting. Mm -hmm. Jumping back into Vertigo again, we have Hellblazers 288. John Constantine looks like he went through hell and back. Hey, John Constantine, that's, he's for, in uh, Justice League Dark. I know he is, but he's also in Vertigo still. Apparently they have to finish up the Hellblazer stories. Why am I not up to date with these characters? I don't know. You tell me. I gotta keep on my toes with these research things. Definitely. Okay, jumping once again back into the normal DCU, we have Legion of Superheroes number 6. I dropped this title 
Um, no idea. New story arc is beginning in this issue. Um, yeah. Girl can fire green fire from her mouth. Awesome. That's it. Hey, if it's shooting at that, why not? Next up, My Greatest Adventures, number five, Garbage Man, Robot Man, and Purple Half-Naked Woman. <laughs> Playing I'm sorry. Frog. The cover, yeah, I was just going to say, the cover is just funny. It, it is cute in a way of seeing them doing Leapfrog, but in a way, it's funny. Okay. That's all I have to say about this cover. Yeah, that's all I have to say about this cover. <laughs> Next, a comic book I love, Nightwing, number six. Wow. Oh, yeah. Crisis. Dude, Dick got shot in the arm. Is that Dick? or Maybe that's young Dick. Maybe, but the cover is just... It's like a midlife crisis scene. Midlife crisis? Where do you see a midlife crisis? Where like do you he's get about to, your... Like, he's just... Like, he got shot in the arm, and, and you see a face right there, and... It's like, dude, that makes no sense whatsoever. There's no midlife crisis involved in this. It would be something related to it. See, you don't make me finish a sentence. How? If you let me finish a sentence, you would understand me more, even though you barely understand me. There's no midlife crisis going on in this book. Next, right, we have right. Red Hood and the Outlaws, issue number six. Looks like uh, Jason Todd's going to be going through some... Uh, Painful stuff. Very painful stuff. Oh, yes. Uh, half mask and... Uh, and that's a hard mask. That's like a helmet. I would say... I like Red Hood and the Outlaws. A lot of people don't. And uh, that's because of the whole Starfire thing. Guys, you should look over that because Jason Todd definitely has a very good story going on with his, with his uh, character and stuff. Absolutely. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Okay, next we have Supergirl number six. You guys are looking at the new Lady Maxima versus um, Supergirl. Oh, wow. Yeah, she doesn't look human anymore, Lady Maxima. It's like Supergirl already fought Superboy. Now she's facing someone else. She's know, getting right? the cover of all of it. Go, Supergirl. Yeah. Really not much else to say about that. Next we have an awesome cover, Wonder Woman number six. That's... Um, Hades dog, the three-headed dog from hell. Uh-huh. I'm interested to see what's going on here. This Same cover here. looks awesome. You can't mess with a strong woman like that. I mean... Oh, no. Nope. Well, if it swallows one of them, she could always burst her way out through the stomach. So, yeah. Uh, I would say so. That, that cover is definitely epic. 100%. And finally this week with... Deep, coming from DC Comics... We have Young Justice number 13. This is in relation to the cartoon series that was on TV. Uh, Batman telling Aqualad to leave. Um, dot, 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 question mark. Exclamation point. Definitely. Um, no idea what's going on here at all. I mean, it, it's just like he's just saying, be gone with you and never, ever return again. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting, for those of you who are fans of the cartoon series, you'll be checking this out. For those of you who aren't, you probably won't like me. Uh, it has nothing to do with mainstream DCU at all. It has its own en it's its own entity, basically. So, yeah. And with that, we conclude the week of February 15, 2012. As I said, guys, it's a medium week for comic books. Um, really... I'd say get out there, enjoy your reading, have fun with it. Got a lot of nice books coming out this week. Mm -hmm. A lot of iffy books coming out this week. Um, I know for sure that there are two books I did not put on my pull list for this week that I will be putting on my pull list for, for next week. Um, get out there and read, guys, and we'll see you next time. So keep on reading. All right. Later, guys. Take care, everybody.